Praise the Lord. Our King is coming, beloved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Psalm 24, we have read this before. Um, the last video we were talking about the King. And in Psalm 24, it says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? And we are a city on a hill, beloved. So we are with the Lord in that city on the hill. So just so you know, we are lights. We are people that cannot be moved, okay? So just remember that. Um, <clears throat> or who will stand in his holy place? We stand in his holy place in the Son, in Christ, okay? I praise his name. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Salah. Now the generation that we live in now, there is a remnant also that seeks him. There's a remnant who know him, who have believed God's report and are saved and are walking in his sayings and in his words and what he had said. Praise his name. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Salah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And in Revelation of Jesus Christ, we see the gates. They are the children of the tribes of um, the, the children of the of Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel, and they the angels stand by the gates. Messengers, angels are messengers. Praise the Lord. Salah, which means Salah means Salah Petra, which is red rock. Uh, it's Jesus, basically. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Now, doesn't Jesus say, "Lift up your heads"? lift up your heads and um, the apostles talk about lift up your heads when this happens lift up your heads right praise the lord and he will lift you he be and be ye lift up ye everlasting doors praise the lord jesus is the king of glory um, the door that we must go on into an everlasting door and he has a congregation the congregation of the most high from the beginning it says and so as time has been going from Genesis to Revelation, he's been building his church, his um, body. Actually, it's called out ones, part of his body, and his people who are part of the temple of the living God. Praise the Lord. He's been building it from the beginning, beloved. Hallelujah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. And where is it where, in, um, where we were in Matthew? It says that he will sit in his glory. All right, beloved, the glory of a man is a woman. Praise the Lord. So his gates, his everlasting doors are lifting up their heads and our king is coming in. Praise the Lord by his spirit. Praise the Lord. Christ in us. Praise the Lord. And the Holy Ghost filling us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so you see right here, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. So he's mighty in battle in Revelation, is he not? Yes, he is. Praise his name. So he comes in and sits on his glory in his glory. That is, those are his gates. Um, you see in Revelation during our generation. Praise the Lord. And you see that he's talking about that from this. So this is also a prophecy of future time when Jesus will sit in his glory, in his woman, in the um, new Jerusalem. Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you see that um, Jerusalem above. And where are we? It showed that we are a city on a hill. We're above. Praise the Lord. It says we're translated into the kingdom. Praise the Lord. You've seen that. What was it? Star Wars. Beam me up, Scotty. Well, it's beam me up, Jesus. <laughs> Actually, we say Abba up because Abba lifts us up. It says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up. Abba lifts us up. My grandma, who's native Indian, saw um, the father, and he lifted her up, and she was very tiny, like really small, and he was massive, apparently. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Abba, lift us up. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, you have to agree with me in the comments. Say amen. 
them. And so, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. We read that, sorry. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. That's an everlasting kingdom, beloved. God builds a kingdom that's everlasting. Praise his name. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts is his name. Um, he is the King of glory, Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory, Salah. Praise his name. So when you're looking at this, let's go back to, or back, this is going back to the time of David, the Psalms of David. And Jesus sits on David's throne. So when we're reading this, you were understanding because the books are open, beloved. So let's go back to another book. This is the King of David's books. And we're going to go back to another book that, that really shows us what this is saying, beloved. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise his name. And it's, we're in Matthew 25. So you see the virgins are like Israel. And uh, five of them have the oil. Okay, we read about in the other chapters of Matthew um, how um, the oil and the, the virgins, five foolish and five wise, those that are wise, they are doing unto others as they would have do them do to, to them, you know, as Jesus was telling you what his requirement uh, in his spirit is, you know, what he his people who are lights in the world. He was talking to them, uh, ministering to them on the, um, to the multitude. And he was telling them, you're lights in the world. You know, you are, and this is what we were just talking about, a city on a hill, but we're in the world. Now in Christ, we're on a hill, a city that cannot be moved. Okay. We were lights in the earth. Um, salt, you know, salt is good because it has flavor. But if you lose your flavor, where are you going to get it salted? You need, you need the, the, the fire from the Lord, the oil from the Lord, praise the Lord. And, and read this whole chapter. Um, I've read it about the talents and about sharing the talents and that I had experiences where God took me up on this big high hill and I was with other people. We had Bibles and we were comparing what Jesus had shown us, the, our understanding. And we were the uh, God was showing the five wise virgins went up on that hill. We're sharing. Praise the Lord. And then um, this is the part that matches Psalm 20, uh, 24, I believe it was. When the Son of Man, this is Jesus the King, shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him. So he says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and the King of glory will come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. <laughs> Praise the Lord sit upon his glory in his glory and all the holy angels with him so the angels are standing at the gates also right then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory there you go <laughs> the king of glory will come in we saw in psalm 24 <laughs> and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats so we've been talking about who are the goats, who are the fake Christians that Jesus warned about, the false Christ. He's giving us that understanding because he can see, he sits in heaven and looks down on men and sees all the affairs of men. He knows who the goats are and who the sheep are. He knows his people. He knows those who worship Baphomet. You can't hide it from God. He knows his sheep because he's, we're sealed in him and he is in us. By the Holy Ghost, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. It, said, it continues before him, and um, he gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left, on the left. Then shall the king, we're talking about the king, say unto them on his right hand, come, Ye blessed of my Father, Abba up. Remember Abba up? Abba's going to lift us up. The King is in us. Abba's going to lift us up. The holy angels are with us. I've had many experience where the holy angels are with me. Um, and the Father is with me and the King is with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray he's with you too. I know he's with my grandson because he said, Jesus said he's going to clean up his garden. And we're in the earth where his garden is. 
we're outside the paradise, but in the spirit, we're sealed in Christ who sits on the throne in paradise. Praise his name, okay? Praise him. He's coming to get his people. He's going to bring us where he is. He went and made it, prepared a place for us. Many mansions in the kingdom, praise his name. Come ye, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Woohoo! That's such good news. For I was in hunger, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Now the Lord talked to me about the fatherless, the, the Good Samaritan. This is all very similar to the Good Samaritan story. And um, when you're ministering to people the word of God, giving them the gospel of Christ, many of them are his people, and they have been beat up by the devil and his army, and many of them are um, in prison. You have to go visit them with the word of God and bring that word to them. Now the Lord showed me in visions and experiences and dreams um, that this is what I'm doing when I'm giving the word of God. And I've had people in um, my house who were naked and beat up. And they were coming in to get clothed by the word of God, by, by the Lord. Because you give them, a, a, whenever they get born again, they get um, linen clothing. Okay, uh, Christ, the armor of God, covers them. Okay, and when you're feeding them the word, it's food, it's meat. When you're, you're giving them the gospel, when you're giving them drink, Jesus said, drink of my cup and you'll have everlasting life and they can drink freely, it says in Revelation. So you give them the spirit. Okay, Jesus said, the words that I speak are spirit and they are life. So when it's coming by the power of the, of the, the Lord, it's coming in power. A dead letter cannot do anything, but someone with a heart that's ready and prepared and wants God to come in to them and clothe them, um, he will give it even from someone with a dead letter. If, if that person is hearing from the Lord, that word is going to have power. Even if it's not coming from that person, their heart is prepared for the word. That's why Jesus didn't, and the apostles in your life, you know, let them, you know, give the word, you know, don't worry, if, don't bother them who use the name of Jesus. However, in the end times, he is separating the sheep, the goats, the wolves, the terrorists amongst the wheat. He is getting us away from them, and he is burning them up. Um, so with the word, the word burns them up too. Um, but these people, you know, we're helping them, we're ministering to them, we're clothing them when they're naked. And I've had not only dreams of people being naked and coming in my home, and they were all beat up. And um, they were there because they needed to be clothed. They needed to be helped. They were sick. I had a lot of sick people. Um, one person had to go to the hospital. The angels um, and I were together, and this person was got bit by the wolf, and the uh, angels had to take him to the hospital. So I prayed, and so God is going to take care of them. Um, and I've been in, I've went into prisons, which are in the spirit. This is all in the spirit, beloved, because we're talking about the inner man. That is the, the man that God is after. The flesh will not profit you anything, it says in the scriptures. The fresh flesh pot profit you nothing. That's why you have to have faith in the flesh. It says in um, is it Galatians uh, 2 or somewhere, um, it says that, you know, we, we uh, in the flesh, we have faith in the Son of Man, Son of God, Jesus Christ, okay? So that's our faith. And um, that's what to do with this you know, old, old man, you know, because we have an inner man that's important. And you have to understand the difference between the flesh and the spirit because we battle against the flesh, right? So that's why we have to keep our, renew our mind to be, a, have a mind of Christ, to put our mind on heavenly things. And right now, um, God has made some of us to look upon the wicked and their things so that we can divide the sheep from the goats, the tares from amongst the wheat, the wolves in sheep's clothing. And uh, many of us are doing this, um, brother, um, our brother Jeremiah Cohen, uh, sister um, on his channel's name, Jeremiah Cohen, he's doing that same thing, okay? So um, we're who the sorcerers are and what they're doing. And at the same time with doing that, we're getting people out of prison 
And um, one man that I was giving the gospel and explaining why um, other occult things were, I believe that that's what I, I was doing, showing them who the light was. I said, you know, uh, Satan was a light bearer. Jesus is the light. Okay. And it almost like he understood. He was in prison. Um, he and a bunch of people with him. And I went to this place. It, this prison is not like the prisons we have in here. This was a spiritual prison, and this prison was very serious, beloved. Um, the guards at this prison looked like the people, or the um, the ones that you see in the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ. Um, they had long hair like women, but they looked, they looked just like the predator in the movie um, uh, Predator, and they could appear and disappear in that movie. These were ones that would take people prison, and they had people pri in prison, and as I was getting these other people out, I was telling them, follow me, to, we must get to the cross. They saw this big, huge, tall guy with long hair like a woman, and he looked very scary, and he was holding people captive. And the people that I was getting out of prison, he couldn't touch, or me. He couldn't touch me. He looked at me, and he just kept, then he looked back at his prisoners. And I said, come with me, I need to get you to the cross. And they were looking at him, they got all scared. I said, don't be afraid of him go to the cross. We need to get to the cross. So I was getting people out of prison with the words I was speaking to them in the, in the flesh. We're speaking words as ambassadors for Christ and we're getting people out of prison. That's how important the word of God is and why there was a the doctrines of demons came in because the demons, I even saw them, they were handing out Bibles in churches and people would become naked um, God showed me that in a dream, and then he took me to that scripture, um, Doctrines of Demons, and then he showed me they were naked. So they thought they were in the right church, but the church was making them naked. And so we were giving them the truth. I'm, I give out King James Bibles, and they're getting clothed. And so this is very important understanding so that you understand it's about the word of God. Now, the woman crushes the head of the serpent. Jesus, in doing this, put a wound to the head of the serpent. Now, with us speaking the word, we're going to crush the head of the serpent, beloved. So do that with me, and a copy love to you.